Netherlands and um, I want to apply for the associate trainer program um, and this is my first video that I'm going to send in so before I am going to show you guys the footage of where I am now with one of my horses I want to give you guys a little bit of an story up front about this horse. This is Pura. I've owned her since she was 12 years old and uh, I actually bought her as a friend for my quarter horse in which I uh, that, that was my good riding horse and uh, I trained reining with that one and uh, I actually made it to the European Championships qualifications not something every, everyone was or can be proud of I actually am because I uh, bought that horse as a three-year-old which I didn't really intend to do and uh, I trained that one myself and actually the past year in which I qualified myself I applied art ride in my daily training and only trained for the rainy maneuvers like once a month just to keep her a little bit updated and to make sure that she would still respond to the aids and uh, that really improved that horse um, that horse is not mine anymore i sold her a few years ago uh, because i wanted to continue with this one um, but uh, this horse started out as just a friend for my quarter because she had no friends not social and well they liked each other um, at a certain point, the farmer gave me the option, her own quarter, like, uh, it's either going to be you who takes her or I'm going to bring her to the slaughterhouse because, uh, well, I cannot do anything with this horse, she's not uh, making any money for me, um, so uh, what's it going to be? Um, before that, I already did some work with this horse with, uh, with a 12-year-old girl. Um, as you can see, uh, her back is really hollow here in this picture, which is uh, actually right after I bought her. Um, that girl was actually supposed to buy this horse, but um, everyone told her that she could never ever become a sports horse again, and uh, she was really crooked on all sides. Well, they were quite right. I just thought that this horse deserved a chance, and uh, well, I couldn't let her go to the slaughterhouse so i said okay fine i'll take her and uh we'll see what we can do she's either going to be a really expensive loan more or she could actually become a horse that i can ride so with that i started um uh, trading the way i knew i could or well i i used to ride back then um and knowing that there was just one thing that I needed to do, and that was mostly fix this horse's back. Um, I had a clinic in the Netherlands, and during that clinic, Will asked me about this horse's background. And one of the one of the things that I vividly remember of this horse is when she got to the, our barn, is that um, she was about eleven. She was with Foal. Well, she was pregnant back then, and she was one horror. You could not get close to her if you pass her stall. She would literally attack you over the stall door. So we needed to build a fence there. Uh, kids were not around in the same, not allowed to go in the same hallways. She was standing, and um, right after she gave birth, she became well a lass of a dragon. But she was really dangerous. Like you, you I'm not easily impressed by a horse but with her I really was I would I, I stayed away from her but what I noticed when she, she gave birth that after that she opened up a little you could tell that having that fall out of her really made a difference for her well in this picture this fall is about six months old and she just got separated from her about maybe well the fall was a little bit older so maybe seven eight months old and they've been separated like a month or two months before this and uh well uh, yeah this is actually where the journey uh with rehabbing this horse started for me me having absolutely no clue in what of a terrible terrible shape this horse was at that time um 
uh, one of the girls that was riding this horse before I bought her and uh, well one of the things she did she was actually really queen at to uh, uh, throw herself up in the air with four legs and then turn around um, so looking back it was all because of the back pain but at then she was just well a shitty horse when when you got on her she felt like a two-year-old uh, like really unbalanced and uh, me with my cocky head thought that I could fix this riding um, so well not me at first I started with some younger lighter girls to uh, let her ride so I'd get launcher and then throw a kid on and so on and so on. I definitely did not improve this horse at that time. Having no idea, obviously, about saddles and riding and training and shit whatsoever when it comes to horses like this. Or, well, actually, horses at all. Um, but yeah, I tried to do as best as I could back then. Seeing pictures like these um, really um, makes it clear for me that. Um, I was so much off the right track. Um, she luckily we stopped this soon enough, and she didn't completely get broken over the neck. Um, one of the things I did pay attention to at all times is that the uh, lower arm is in the same line as the rein, and that the hand was moving forward towards the mouth, and then the nose was out. That was something that I fell back then luckily that was really important i didn't want to see the horse's mouth against the chest so i was not rolling these horses or any horses um so that's one of the things that i think um control the damage a little bit but in the end wrong saddles wrong frame and not giving this horse space and time to develop in the correct way. Even though she must have been in a great amount of pain and um, well we were not really working this horse properly she was still getting sweeter and sweeter and good to girls and uh, more reliable and she did start to look better and better taken care of. Her coat got better and more shiny and and she got some fat on that body because she was completely full with worms when uh, I started working this one and it actually took me about a year to get all the worms out of her. Um, the foal was literally just sucking, sucking like everything that was left in her out of her to uh, get some nutrition. So uh, it was quite easy for this horse to look better than what she looked like when we started. I felt it was uh, time for a change. And uh, I started Googling about getting uh, to work horses more over their back. I was looking for new ideas and inspiration. And uh, I really noticed how hard it was to find some really concrete tips and tricks. And uh, But with the logic behind it. I have a logic to make stuff work for me. This is why I'm also in accounting, because I need logic and explanation for why and how stuff works. Um, so with that, I uh, found Yvonne, uh, who just came back out of uh, the States and became an associate trainer herself. And uh, that's actually where my art to ride journey started. And that's, um, I think that was in 2015 like uh, one of the first times that Yvonne came over and uh, she already told me back then that this horse was going to be a challenge. One of the problems I really have with this horse was running off. Like her speed was uncontrollable. She couldn't canter at all. Um, she uh was really unre unreliable and I actually sometimes got quite scared of her. Uh, I fell off quite a few times because she would jump up and then make a 360 degree turn. Um, so I was losing my faith in this horse and I was losing faith in myself and my own knowledge and capabilities and um, well therefore I seek help with Yvonne obviously. 
and um but i was stubborn uh for one, one of the things she said right away was like you need to get off and you need to start to do work from the ground that would actually be a better start i already tried to work the nose down a little bit more um due to the things that were on yvonne's website so therefore i was uh, already trying to ride her more towards the contact and with the nose out towards the ground but um yeah she was definitely not strong enough to bring her back up and my stubborn ass said back then, but I'm not going to launch that horse. I'm going to ride. One of the reasons was that I've been launching 16 horses a day for a year and a half for seven days a week. So you can imagine that I was not a big fan of launching because it just bores the shit out of me. Um, so I started riding. I had a dressage shadow for her that I thought was not fitting too badly. Um, after a few months, this is actually what she started to look like, so there was already a little bit of improvement there, and, um, uh, she looked definitely happier, and I started to feel to get more into, uh, um, uh, into a bond with her, that she was starting to learn that, um, uh, I was starting to listen to her. Well, then I moved barns again uh, because I was starting to teach a lot. So I moved my horses to that barn and that's where we started the lunching sessions. Um, and she kept improving, though, so that was nice. So quite some tools and whatever. I've been trying to do the lunging first before I actually started to work in hand as stubborn ass as I am because, well... Eventually, I couldn't really deny the fact that riding was not the solution, so I had to start lunging. Yay! So, I started that just on the bridle with um, the lunch line over the pole, but she just would not get any lower than this. So, that's when I started to use the chambon. And, um, slowly but steady, there was getting some improvement here. I would say she could use a little bit more activation, but I should have started with the work in hand, obviously. Um, but she wouldn't get any lower than this. She would really fall into the inside and she would start rushing quite quickly. So here is a trot. Um, and here she also wouldn't go any lower than knee height. And um, her tempo and her rhythm was really a thing that was really hard for me also to just establish what's good for her and what's not. But here you can really see her pulling her nose to the outside and um, she would really, if she got tired or sore at a certain point, she really would start rushing. And I should have stopped the exercise way earlier than I did every time, but yeah stubborn and yada yeah um you can really see that she is going up and down the footing here is even, uneven so it was going up and it was going down and you can really see that in her tempo the left lead she would really come inwards towards me and it was really hard to stare out for quite some time um and the stupid thing was actually that after a lesson with Yvonne later, she said, okay, start sending her out, away from you. Stop letting her be so close to you and actually give her some more space to speed up and actually get a, a good rhythm. And once I started doing that, the lunching got a lot better. Um, I unfortunately don't have a footage of that of back then. I have some new footage of the lunching now. But I'm not going to add that in this video. It started to look better and every now and then I tried to uh, climb on. I um, had a saddle made for her, um, which I didn't ride in for the first year and a half because I actually started all over again, adding the work in hand and then adding the lunching and doing everything the freaking proper way and just, well put my stubbornness and impatience somewhere in a faraway corner, like, never ever come out again. And um, over time I can honestly say that she started improving and, uh, and I just accepted the fact that it would take some time for me before I could actually start riding this horse properly. Um, 
during the last clinic with um, um, Morgoth from Peter Harbin Saddles, uh, taking a look at my saddle, actually, Bruce Harbin checked out my saddle, and he said it should be fitting fine for uh, the next year, so luckily I could, at least when I start riding this horse, could do that on that saddle, it's not too long, it still had some space to balance out, and um, uh, here's a picture of actually the development that she made over the whole period which was uh well the top left photo was um when she was 12 and the down right is when she was 16 no 15 turning 16 so that was already um uh three four three years in between um and uh well yeah she still wasn't that awesome and during the last clinic Will said she was ready to do some riding um, during the, the, the luncheon where she was still quite rushing in a strange environment. Um, but she was definitely not ready to um, go into a working position or even thinking about asking that. Um, that was in August last year and I actually started really riding her a little in December. Which, first of all, I thought it was really crazy because she could run off and I would start riding a horse in the cold. Like, what am I thinking? No one in the Netherlands does that with a horse they don't trust. And it just made sense to me that she was ready and I was ready to get on again. So what I literally did, I did the working hand, I did the lunging, and then when she was there quite comfortable, I would just get on, do a round and walk, get her to stretch and then get off. And uh, with that, during the past six months, I actually got my faith back in, in, in her. And I really cannot remember the last time that she actually balled it off with me. Back then, she did a few times, especially when it was super cold or windy or whatever. She would still get a little bit freaked out over a cat. But she really, really stabilized over the last year. I wouldn't say that she's always perfect over her back just yet because I know she's not. Definitely the trot, the tr transition from the walk into the trot is really, really bad still. Um, so sometimes it takes me like three rounds to get her to think about stretch. But um, it feels right to me not to go back to the walk there because it's easier for her to bring her back up in a trot compared to the walk. So I'm just going to ignore that and I trust that the transition will get better and better. And actually over the last week I noticed that um, it now takes me about a round to get her into the stretch. Well, and then we're going to start with uh, the footage from today actually. And um, I was even not, e not even sure whether I would ride her during this clinic, but then I got, was there, I brought my other horse, and well, I'm driving up there, and uh, the people from Peter Harbin are coming over anyway. I had some money left, so I was like, okay, right, let's let's do the clinic. Well, there, well, there's Will, because he's telling me something in the meantime, and uh, <laughs> I haven't been listening to the videos actually, so I have no idea what kind of commentary he's giving me here. What I really like here is that she's putting out her nose so much and you can really see her back coming up and that it's really bouncy and this is actually the first time that I see this so strongly with her. Obviously I don't video myself every time that I get on so I think the last video I, I saw a little bit of myself was um, I think last January that I, I saw something from the walk. Um, I couldn't find that footage unfortunately, but here you can really see and especially compared to last year what will really pointed out that uh, her walk was not really strong enough to um, uh, carry me and really bring the back up and her trot was way better so I should skip the walk a little bit and um, go in towards the trot as fast as I could because that will really improve her so that's exactly what I've been doing when I started riding because I did the work in hand, then I did the walk work uh, in the in the on the lunge, and when she got there in the right rhythm and relaxation, I did some trot, found her relaxation there. When I got on, obviously first out, I started with one round of the walk, then I got off. Next time, like two rounds maybe, and if I could really get her to stretch in the walk and she felt comfortable there, I would do a little bit of trot. 
but when I didn't feel comfortable, I, I just didn't. Um, so, uh, well, Will didn't really mention that to me, that, that, that she was still not good enough in the walk, but I, I know why now, because when I see this, you can really see that the back is moving there, and that the dip behind the saddle is um, disappearing while I'm walking her, it's still there, um, but um, compared to a year ago, there's she already improved quite a lot. Um, I'm actually, I do know which question I asked her is because uh, I have some saddle issues and her left shoulder is way more popping out than the right. So my question here was, um, what can I do to do something about that? And Will answered me, well, absolutely nothing special except just continue the work like this. And it's quite normal that horses get uneven um, and developing uneven in which their shoulder pops out on one side, but that's, well, where the saddle problems are coming. I don't have a Peter Harbin saddle, and unfortunately, I'm not in a place right now that I can actually afford it, so I'm working with the best that I can uh, right now. Um, well, one thing I definitely know about myself is that my seat is not optimum, <laughs> to say the least. I'm willing to try to push myself a little bit. Here I look to the left and to the right to um, flex my neck a little and to focus myself to look forward, which straightens me out right away. Also, I have a little problem with keeping my feet still and that uh, and quiet. And that's mostly, well, I think one of the reasons why I have such floppy feet is because I've been riding in a Western saddle for a long time and that gives you, well, it's impossible to move your feet that much in a western saddle so um and i really have to push her forward the less i have to do that the better it actually becomes and the more quiet my feet are looking in how they flop in my other words which i really have to push forward um this is actually quite nice for me um so that's one of the things i also need to carry my hands a little bit more forward um, so I can push out the nose a little bit more. Uh, today I wanted to work uh, and look whether I can get her into a walking position a little bit more. And one of the things I really felt here is that she was struggling a lot. Um, she was really chewing on the bit. She was not accepting my hand. And, uh, well, after a few strides, I knew that I could not get her into that working position with a still mouth and a constant contact, so I, I let her down quite quickly. Um, well, what I said, the transitions into trot are not fluent, and uh, one time is there better than the other. I really tried to push her quietly into a trot because, well, this time she jumped into it, and that's something uh, old from her. Um, here you see during this circle that she's already coming down and uh, that's actually quite good for her. Um, I really can feel this with this horse that when the contact is right, uh, like um, uh, she really, she's not hanging on my hand but she's taking the contact and that's nice after a few years that actually started about three months ago I think that I really started feeling that. Um, so here we're trying to do a little bit of working position, um, but here also she's just not warmed up yet, but it's better than in the walk, she was struggling less, and, um, but, um, she gets uncomfortable, which is not weird because I haven't actually been asking a lot of this, I think maybe two or three times throughout the entire year. So, well, here she's slowly starting to get better. And uh, we were really looking for the right position for her to be in. And what I really like about her here is that she's not really crawling behind the bit. She's chewing on it and she's not really accept accepting the contact. But she's not bring bringing her nose too much towards her chest. Which was something that she really did. Um, so here I'm doing a little leg yield. Um, she's really nice and comfortable in that actually for me. And uh, quite fluent. Um, and even in the leg yield, I can really feel her, um, warming up more. I think here we're going to do a leg yield to the left. And she's really struggling on the bit here. It's really funny because this was her good side, but, um, I think about two weeks ago we switched. So she started struggling more on this side and got better on the other. 
Um, so she was way more fussy with the bit here and it was harder to bend around on my left leg. Um, it was also harder for me to get her a little bit more forward on this side. So uh, that was really funny to notice. And especially in a big arena like this, um, she um, it was really clear to feel that. Here we're doing a little bit more to work in position um, because she felt really good here. I was trying to work it down, but she took the contact really nicely there. I'm doing a little bit of shoulder in here to see how she's doing. Here she starts struggling, so I let her go down into a deeper stretch. Um, well, here again with my seat, I'm leaning way more forward. And that's also a stupid thing of me because I, I feel that I'm less on her back when I ride like this. Well, I'm, I'm still not sure whether um, I'm actually doing that because um, I'm, I'm out of balance myself because I'm leaning too much on the shoulder, leaning so much forward. Um, so I should really focus again and not be too scared to sit on her a little bit more. Um, also here you see her, do, did she starting to step on her even a little bit more better? And even she starts to um, get a little bit of better rhythm here. Um, going to work a little bit into working position, but this is about as high as that's good for her right now. So this is the, the frame that I should be aiming for for the past few weeks and then slowly to start a little bit more of her. On the other side, she still really needs to stretch down. So um, I think the plan for the next month is or so is just to work on the stretch a little bit more on that side until she stabilizes again a little bit more and uh, well alternate a little bit towards a working position. Here a little bit more to shoulder in also towards a working position here she st just start struggling and uh, I let her out and you can really see her shoulder coming up a little bit more in that stretch uh, after I do these exercises so it's really cool for me to see right now uh, too that uh, how, my, how much these exercises actually improve her um, and how much you can actually get out of one training uh, at home during the training I don't trot her this long in a row so um, well, Yvonne said she was getting too fat. She actually um, asked uh, whether she was uh, uh, pregnant. <laughs> and I walked up to her. So, uh, well, here also trying to, again, to do a little bit of working position. Uh, but yet also here she's struggling a little bit more. She's trying to push down and then uh, get behind the bit a little bit. Um, so I, I need to find a place here where she gets comfortable. Yeah, and I'm sitting way more, too much for it. So that's something I really need to pay attention on. But here, the funny thing is actually she's starting to stretch here way better than in the beginning. And then you see, you can see her lengthening her stride a lot compared to uh, to the beginning. And here she starts to understand the working position. Oh yeah, we're, we're starting a little bit of Piaf. I'm not asking too much of her. The only thing I want from her is actually to move her hind legs a little bit more to the front feet. Um... And compared to my other horse, she actually gets the rhythm a whole lot better. And she can do a little bit more of the diagonal pairs. While the other one finds it easier just to bring the hind legs closer to the front. Here, there you go. It's slow. The rhythm is not really a trotty kind of rhythm yet. But she's really trying to move the diagonal pair. So um, I'm not asking a lot more from her here. Uh, Bill tells me to tap her a little bit more there to get her hind legs a little bit more activated. And with this part, because I saw this before, uh, now you can really see her rounding up a little bit more and she's starting to bring her nose down. She's really chewing on the bit, but she's really trying here as well to, um, to, to go a little bit more towards my hand and round herself up. Um, this is about as much as I'm going to ask from her here, but, um. Yeah, it's nice to do that little bit of exercise with her. Um, and it was also really good to feel, because usually I do this by the end of my training, but it really f it was good to feel also what this work does um, when you do it in the middle of your training and then get on again and uh, ride a little bit more and um, use that exercise to um, uh, improve your riding again for that session.
here my hands that that's one of the things that I've been trying to work on is to keep my hands more forward even if I spread my arms a little bit more to work into the contact not to bring my hands back like I do here but to keep them a little bit more outwards and forward but yeah I was the last one that day and to be honest I was quiet or I still am because I haven't been to bed yet I've, I've been quite kind of tired and then I lose a little bit of my focus um I think we're about to start cantering now She couldn't canter. This horse could not canter. Not even in the field, this horse could canter. So um, the fact that I can actually do some canter work on the saddle is a really, really, really big milestone for me because I never really thought that we can do that. Um, the thing is that her right canter is the shitty one, so that's this side. And um, she would cross canter mostly, and she's going to do that a few times in this session. And that's mostly my mistake because our arena at home is smaller. So it's easier to keep her in the right bend and keep my leg uh, pushy to um, put her hind quarters a little bit more into the circle. So here I'm not pushing enough in the right bend. So there's where she starts cross cantering. Um, and then it takes some time here. You see her actually starting to get lame and lose rhythm. And um, here I'm going to start cantering again soon so I'm, I'm rising trot until i go into the kennel i don't do a sitting trot before i put her into a kennel because i don't want to uh, uh do that on the back of this horse just yet because she's not strong enough so i'm actually doing the rising trot and then put her into that kennel um and here you have that really crippled kissing spines kind of uh hop and here she starts cross cantering again because i just don't keep her into the right bend here She's going to do it again soon. There we go. <laughs> I know exactly because um, we have this problem for such a long time. And I know exactly how to uh, do this in a smaller arena. But with the size of this arena, I'm really struggling. So here I'm actually do it again. Go back to the right canner. Good. And here I'm really pushing my left leg in to keep her right. And then I want to take her back. And then I get her to get you straight. And she goes cross canner again. This is about enough for, uh, because usually I just do the transition, let her go for half a circle, and then I stop because I know that's enough for this horse. Um, here I switch sides because I know, I know that this works with this horse. Uh, this is the canter on the other side, which is clearly a lot better. I actually even get it just stretched quite deeply here, but doesn't happen every session. Uh, but here, this uh, I was really happy to look at this. Um, and here you actually see her strides getting bigger on the right hand side. She's way more hoppy while here you can really see her move through. So that was really nice. Um, so well, this is about the end of my video now. Um, well, as Will knows, actually, because he's seen this horse before. She comes from, uh, and Yvonne too. And she comes from a very, 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 very far, um, to where we are now and um, I'm actually quite proud of what I have what I was able to do with this horse and uh, well I hope to see uh, more improvement of course um, well this is my submission for now and um, later on I will uh, see if I can uh, get some stuff together for uh, work in hand and uh, some lunging